In today's video, we're gonna do a comparison video that Ryan and I did not see on the horizon a year ago. Comparison between the two most affordable e-trikes that we know of, so let's get into it. Hey everyone, Ryan from eBike Escape. And JT from eBike Escape. Our goal in this video is to help you make an informed decision if you're considering both of these electric trikes. Now looking at the product pages of both of these electric bikes, some of these differences may not be apparent. We're gonna dive super in depth and show you the key differences between both of these electric bikes. We think they're both great mobility devices. We're not gonna tell you which one to buy because we think there's unique features to both of these electric bikes. But what we do appreciate is if you use our affiliate links down in the description, it's a free and easy way to help support the channel and makes videos like this one possible. Thank you so much for your support. We'll also have some other resources down in the description, our electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and our electric bike discounts code page where we track all the deals on the electric bike brands that we follow. Before we talk about specs, there's a few things that we think are important for you to realize when shopping for an electric trike. And be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video because after we go through all the specs, we're really gonna put both of these electric trikes to the test. Using some of these uh, wonderfully colored cones here. Of course, we're gonna take both of them up our hill climb test so you can compare motor power and maybe some other fun things as well. The first thing that I think is important to realize is that these are not necessarily two wheel electric bike replacements. I personally view these as more mobility devices, getting people outside riding a bike who might not otherwise be able to. So as we're gonna go through the full specs, you'll realize that these have a lower top speed than most electric bikes. And because they're three wheeled instead of two wheeled, they have different handling characteristics. And to build upon what Ryan just said too, what we've seen the most with a lot of these bikes is that you'll have um, a husband or a wife or whatever and their significant other, their spouse, won't be able to really feel comfortable or balance on a two-wheel e-bike anymore and they still want to be able to ride with them. So the trikes coming to the market, really, they're, I mean, they're new to Ryan and us, um, but that's the most popular place that we've seen them in the comments and really just people saying, hey, these were great. I was looking for a three-wheeled electric affordable trike or something on the lower end of the price point and or to be able to get it from the same company that you're getting your electric bike from that you already trust. And as JT mentioned, both of these electric bikes were released in the last year. So we're going to ask you guys to let us know in the comment section, do you want to see more electric trike reviews? Of course, we know both of these electric bikes now incredibly well, but it's something that we're considering covering more in detail. With that, I think we should jump into all the specs and talk about some of the key differences between both of these electric trikes. First, let's talk about price because that is a significant difference between both of these electric bikes. First off, we have the Rad Trike priced at $24.99. It does come with this comfort seat with the backrest that is adjustable which is nice. Of course, Rad Power Bikes has a slew of accessories that will work on this electric bike, but you will need to purchase them separately. I would personally add the large basket here in the rear, maybe a front rack and basket for some additional storage. In comparison, the Electric XP trike is priced at $14.99, a price that even shocked us knowing the electric brand, of course, known for their value priced electric bikes. and. They are currently including the cargo package, which includes this front rack with the small basket. It also includes the large basket in the rear, which comes pre-installed. It does not come with this really nice bike case bag, which happens to fit really nicely in here. Check out the links in the description to this. We think this is a great solution if you wanna bring some cold beverages with you. Just a quick note too with that, we know that there is a pretty big price disparity between these two e-bikes, but stay tuned. We're going to go through all of the features of these two bikes because there are some things that set the Rad Trike out above the electric and also make the electric a better value for some people as well. Next, let's get into weight of these electric bikes and weight capacity. Yeah, so uh, I have we have our spec sheet here so we don't get anything wrong. So the Rad Trike comes in at 82 pounds, fully assembled as you see it here, with a payload capacity of 415 pounds and a maximum rider weight of 325 pounds. Also, just a quick note, the rear rack has a max weight capacity of 60 pounds. And if you do decide to purchase the extra front rack for the Rad Trike, it has a weight capacity of 30 pounds. 
And then moving over to the XP trike, this bike alone weighs 69.5 pounds, has a maximum payload capacity of 415 pounds, very similar to the Rad trike, a maximum rider weight of 330 pounds, the front basket has a max weight of 35 pounds, so don't overload your cooler too much. And then the rear basket has a max weight of 75 pounds. So the big difference between these two bikes in this category is gonna be the overall weight. The XP trike comes in at about 10 pounds lighter, being that the frame is made out of aluminum and the rad trike is made out of steel. While the weight capacities of those two bikes are exactly the same, the difference in total weight is from the materials chosen to design the frames. Next, let's talk about something that's really important if you're buying an electric bike, and that is, of course, battery capacity. The Rad Trike comes with a 10 amp hour battery, slightly below average of 14 amp hours. The XP Trike, by comparison, comes with a slightly larger 14 amp hour battery located behind the seat tube. As we see on all the Rad Power Bikes, the Rad Trike has a ignition, which means when the key is turned all the way to the right, the bike can turn on in the middle point, the battery cannot be removed and the bike cannot be turned on. And then of course you push in and turn all the way left for the battery to be removed. So that is a nice security feature compared to the XP trike, which is either on or unlocked and you can remove the battery. Next, let's get into another important factor and that is motor power. The electric XP trike comes with a 500 watt nominal 1092 watt peak motor in the rear, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about later in the video, and it has 65 newton meters of torque. The Rad Trike has a motor located in the front wheel. In comparison, the Rad Trike has a 750 watt peak motor, and that's what you're gonna find on all of their electric bikes. They all peak at 750 watts, and that is by design because Rad Power Bikes is taking a hard line on the 750 watts peak, whereas other companies in the industry are taking a different approach and a different interpretation of the rules, having a 750 watt nominal motor, which of course peaks higher. While on the subject of motors, both of these bikes have a 14 mile per hour top speed, and that's of course for accessibility, and also trikes are a little bit different compared to a normal electric bike, and trust me, you don't really want to be riding these bikes at any faster than 14 miles per hour. And on the note of top speed, one thing to note is that our XP trike came shipped in beginner mode. That's pedal assist level one and two with a top speed of five miles per hour and pedal assist levels three to five with a top speed of 12 miles per hour. But you can go in the advanced settings and change it to 14 miles per hour if you'd prefer. Again, that is for accessibility purposes. Moving in close up here to the cockpits, this is where some other differences between the two bikes really start to show. The Rad Trike has this simple LCD display. This is the typical left control that we've seen on their plus models, but if you notice, it is missing the center display, which is where you would typically see the speed displayed. Moving back to this left-hand display, we wanted to point out how big these buttons are. They're really large, easy to press. While you're up here close, you will notice that when you turn on the bike, the headlights automatically turn on. Nice safety feature. And if you look in here close, you'll see this R engraved on this bottom button. That signals that when you hold down this button, the trike will go into reverse. That's a really cool feature. Be sure to stay tuned for our riding footage where we will show off how that functions, but you simply turn this to R and give it a little throttle. And that is probably one of the funnest features of the Rad Trike. We're gonna be sure to show that off in our riding footage. For pedal assist on the Rad Trike, you have zero to five. Quick note, you do have access to the throttle even in zero. And the throttle is not connected to having a top speed versus what pedal assist you're in. So you get full access to throttle regardless of whether you are in zero or pedal assist level five. And both bikes do come equipped with right hand twist grip throttles. Moving over to the XP Trike, this is the same display that we've kind of seen on all electric models. So if you're familiar with the functions on all their other SA XP models, you'll be very familiar with this. There's a three button control on the left. Simply hold down the power to turn on the bike. You have pedal assist zero to five. You do not have access to the throttle when in zero. 
And then one difference on the XP trike is that the throttle's top speed is limited by what pedal assist you're in. So if you want the highest top speed, you will put it in pedal assist level five. Whereas if you just want a lower, almost walking speed, you put it in level one. Over here on the controls, the buttons are a little bit smaller. And one thing that is different on the XP trike is that if you hold the down, you will go into walk mode and the bike will try and move at a walking pace if say you're trying to push the bike. And this is a good point to remind you that you should reference both of the manuals on whatever electric trike that you buy. But I do want to call out that the electric has a bunch of advanced settings and they are outlined very well in the manual. Actually, in our unboxing video of the XP trike, we showed off some of the ones that you might want to change. So you can check out that if you are interested. But they do allow you to customize a fair bit of things, which is nice because then you can tune it to your liking. Moving on to the brakes, which is a significant difference between both of these electric bikes. Electric has outfitted the electric XP trike with hydraulic brakes, both front and rear, and they have parking brakes on both sides. Simply hold the lever in and push in, and you can do it on the other side as well. These are five-star branded, and in our experience riding this electric bike, these brakes are perfectly adequate. Moving on to the Rad Trike, Rad Power Bikes took a little bit of a different approach to brakes. On the left side, you have a traditional lever, a little bit elongated. It does have a parking brake, so when you pull it, you can actuate that, so the bike is not going to go anywhere. This is a mechanical disc brake, however, compared to the hydraulic on the XP Trike, and these brakes are radius branded. Now, if you remember when you were a child riding your first bike, they had coaster brakes, and that's exactly what the Rad Trike has. If you're not familiar, what that means is that when you backpedal, that actually gives you braking power. Now, something that I think is worth calling out and something that I think Rad Power Bikes was thinking about when they designed the bike in this way is that not everyone can perhaps pull levers, and so having the rear coaster brake would allow someone who perhaps more easily can just pedal backwards for their brake. Let's go ahead and move in here close and you can get an idea of the tires on each bike. So the electric XP trike comes with these 20 by 2.6 inch, kind of almost have a little bit of a tread pattern here. Stay tuned, we're gonna take this on some crushed gravel to see how it handles. And over here on the Rad trike, we have these 18 by 2.25 Kenda contact tires with a little bit more of a street style pattern. Jumping over to gearing, both of these bikes are single speeds, which means no derailleur, no shifting. The Rad Trike has a 42 tooth front chain ring with 16 teeth in the rear. The Electric XP, on the other hand, has a 36 tooth front chain ring and in the rear, a 16 tooth, same as the Rad Trike. Let's talk about the lights. So the XP Trike comes equipped with these three lights you see on the back. The center light is just a daytime running light that'll stay illuminated, whereas the outside lights are the actual brake lights that'll actuate when you pull the brake lever. Coming around to the front, the XP Trike comes with the Elite headlight, which is one of the brighter LED lights we've seen offered by companies. And then coming over to the Rad Trike, this is the standard Rad light we see, but this is the halo light, which is great for some B-scene visibility. And just a quick nod to both bikes, if you are looking for better B-scene or seeing visibility, we always recommend a handlebar mounted light. These lights both are very bright, but you can never have too many lights when you're trying to not get hit by a car. And then coming around to the back of the Rad Trike, we have a single center mounted light that is also brake actuated and reflectors in the rear on the Rad Trike. Let's talk about sizing. Now I do have the support seat offered from Electric. This will cost you $39 extra compared to the stock seat. The stock seat though, in my opinion, is better than average if you're looking for comfort, kind of a memory foam. Of course, seats are a personal thing, but I was personally impressed by this. Of course, the support seat is nice though because it has a backrest. Now, both of these electric bikes are recommended from the companies for riders all the way down to four foot 10 because of the step through, all the way up to six foot four. Now keep in mind, as you raise the seat height, as you're a taller rider, your weight's gonna be higher up, so something to be mindful of. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the seat in its lowest position here so you can get an idea of just how low the seat can go. I have a quite significant bend in my knees with the seat in its lowest position, moving it up to the position that I would personally ride this bike in. 
So I would personally have the seat maybe right around there. And just a note that the XP trike does come with a suspension seat post. It is a basic suspension seat post. I personally don't find that it adds a ton of comfort. And you can see even as a six foot tall rider, I'm able to get plenty of leg extension if I wanna be in a more comfortable riding position. I would perhaps even put the seat maybe even a little bit lower. Also worth calling out in the cockpit on both of these electric bikes, we have BMX style handlebars. I could bring these handlebars a little bit closer to me if I'd prefer, or perhaps further away, depending on your height and riding preference. Moving on to the Rad Trike, we do have it in its lowest position. And you can see here as well, it goes down nice and low. Again, I'm six feet tall, but if I wanted to, I could raise the seat. Be mindful of the minimum insertion point. You don't wanna pull the seat post past that point and tighten it down. And so now the seat is in its highest position and I do have a 32 inch inseam. So with the Rad Trike in its highest position, I would say if you're a little bit taller than me, you may feel a little bit more comfortable on the XP Trike because that seat post actually can go quite a bit higher. We do have it set to the minimum insertion point on the trike. And from my perspective, no major difference between the support seats. I think they both offer quite a bit of comfort and you can adjust the backrest both up and down. Let's talk about one of the other big differences between the Rad Trike and XP Trike is gonna be the drive systems. So the Rad Trike obviously has the motor in the front wheel, but then it has the pedals connected to only the right wheel. So if you pick up the bike and you pedal, the right wheel will move and you notice the left wheel is not. However, if we swip it the other way, and now try and pedal, the pedals will not go because this outside left wheel is just simply free spinning. So whereas if we come over to the XP trike, we have the motor located here in the rear like a typical e-bike, but if you notice here in the center, you can see it tucked in here, there is a rear differential. So what this differential does is it provides power to both the inner and outer wheel, very similar to a car. So if when you're going around a turn, the inner wheel will be able to spin less and provide a little bit more power to the outside wheel and vice versa. Just note that it is a different drive feeling when you are riding the bikes. Instead of having the bike pull you along, you can actually feel the bike pushing you. And one thing I just want to clarify is that both bikes safety-wise as it relates to sharp turns perform the same, though the differential does make a difference compared to the front wheel drive, which again, we'll show off here in a little bit. All right, JT, one of the things people wanna see is the electric XP trike folded that is a unique feature of this bike it is so just to note the rad trike does come bolted so that you could unbolt it if you needed to and there are simply a couple plugs down here and you have four allen bolts with these bottom ones being slotted you remove these top two loosen the bottom two and you can almost slide the frame apart so for say a longer transit you could unbolt the frames apart to be able to trans them, but the XP trike is going to be a better option for quick movements where you can simply fold it via a lever like the XP models. So on the right hand side here, we have a lever that we undo and I like to leave the handlebars here uh, up so that I can simply walk the front end around and this front wheel will tuck itself right here between the rear wheel and frame. And there we go, now we have a folded trike. And to get a little bit of extra height, we can remove the cooler. We can also fold the handlebars down to get them out of the way. And we could also remove the seat or drop it down. We'll go ahead and put the dimensions for the folded XP trike on the screen. And I also wanna call out, we did unboxing videos on both of these bikes. The XP trike comes shipped folded, virtually fully assembled. The Rad trike takes a little bit more assembly, though they really jangled it into the box. So check out those videos if you're looking at purchasing either of these electric bikes. With that, I think we have to get to the performance section because specs are great, but how do they feel and what are the main differentiators riding these electric trikes? So the first thing we're going to do is take some measurements because there's some slight differences between these electric bikes. And one is the width. Now in testing both of these electric bikes, having them in our storage shop, both of them fit through an exterior door, but the Rad Trike is just a tad longer, about a wheel length. JT's gonna measure it. Yeah, so the Rad Trike from outside fender to outside fender over here is about 32 and three quarters of an inch, whereas the XP Trike comes in at about 30 and a quarter. 
So a decent amount of difference, but like Ryan said, they both fit through an exterior door. The electric is just gonna give you a little bit of extra room to get in and out. So we'll put the wheelbases of both of these electric bikes on the screen, but you can see that it's likely due to the tire choice that the Rad Trike is just a tad shorter in the front. We have the rear wheels aligned. And just generally, when we first received our first electric trike, it was actually a little bit smaller than I was expecting, which means that both of these bikes are very approachable, which of course is nice from an accessibility perspective. Yeah. Speaking of accessibility, we are going to take the measurements of our own here. Firstly, on the Rad trike, now this does slope a little bit. We're gonna say that the step through height is about 13 inches and the clearance on the bottom is just shy of five inches, perhaps four and three quarters. And both of these electric bikes offer plenty of space to actually get your foot over the frame. Moving over to the electric XP trike, we're gonna measure at this flat spot here. And it looks like that's about 13 and a half inches. So both of these bikes, very accommodating. And I can see it over here a little bit better, but the ground clearance here to the bottom of the support is at about six inches. And again, plenty of room here on the electric XP trike frame to get your foot over this nice low step through. Before we get into some of the other tests that we're going to do today, I wanna to show off the reverse on the rad trike. Again, that's going to be done holding the pedal assist down button until you see an R on the screen. And then I can actually just use the throttle and reverse. And this is actually a handy feature, perhaps getting it out of the garage. You don't need to move it around, just simply throw it in reverse and you have the same maneuverability uh, going reverse as you do going forward. Okay, now let's get into our brake test and see how both of these bikes perform. All right, Ryan's gonna go ahead and go down. He's gonna turn the rad trike around. He's gonna come in here and do our really not 100% professional brake test here. We're gonna get up to about 14 miles an hour and these cones are up in about foot increments. Let's see how long until the rad trike was able to stop. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So about seven-ish feet, seven and a half feet, almost eight feet to stop. But I mean, that's from 14 miles an hour. That's pretty good, especially for mechanical disc brakes and using the coaster brake. But let's go ahead and throw it to the XP trike and see what that bike is capable of. Here's Ryan turning around the XP trike. He's gonna get up to its top speed of 14 and do the same thing. There we go. Yeah, so quite a bit shorter with those hydraulic disc brakes. We've got about five feet there it took Ryan to stop, so pretty good. I would say just generally the hydraulic disc brakes front and rear is a little bit more intuitive for me to be both pressing both levers at the same time rather than pulling one and then trying to crank on the coaster brake, which I'm not as familiar with on the Rad trike. But this just shows off that both bikes are plenty capable of stopping. This was kind of a fun test because we're doing a comparison, but I was also curious to see how fast these electric trikes can stop. But again, there is something to be said about the fact that with the Rad Trike, you can still brake, say you have some hand sensitivities. Okay, with that, let's jump into the hill climb test and see what motor performed better up our large hill climb test. So our hill climb tests aren't an exact science, but they do give us an idea of motor performance and these tests really surprised me. The conclusion is that both electric trikes performed extraordinarily well, only dropping a few miles per hour from the 14 mile per hour top speed on this huge hill. And this was with throttle alone. If you haven't checked out any of our other e-bike reviews, we see two wheeled e-bikes that don't perform as well as these trikes did. The Rad Trike performed ever so slightly better than the XP Trike. I guess I assumed that the front wheel drive would have struggled more, especially given the 750 watts of peak power. Remember, I'm a lightweight rider at around 145 pounds, but I would not hesitate to buy either of these electric trikes, even if you plan to ride on moderate hills. Many questions we get is on maneuverability on electric trikes. We set up some cones here to demonstrate both how maneuverable these electric trikes are at low speeds, but absolutely how dangerous they can be at high speeds. It's something to be mindful of. Another thing I wanted to call out is when you're first riding an electric trike, it takes some getting used to. Those were the exact words that my parents used when they hopped on both this bike as well as the rad trike because it's a different experience. My parents are very experienced on their two-wheel electric bikes, 
But now you don't have to balance with the two wheels, but the turning is completely different. It offers increased mobility, but your brain wants to tell you that you're riding a two wheel electric bike, but you absolutely are not. Now I don't want that to dissuade anyone from buying these because I do think they're great mobility devices, but you do just need to take it slow and get used to it. Something I even noticed my dad doing is when he came to a stop, he would immediately put his foot down because of course that's what he's used to on his other two wheeled electric bike. But again, you don't have to, I can sit here all day uh, with the brakes on and I don't have to balance at all because of course we have the two wheels. All right, I'm going to read out the speed that I'm going right now about four or five miles an hour, slowing down just slightly, but I can actually get in between these cones pretty easily. We'll come back through. So at slow speeds, the maneuverability is fantastic. And when everyone tells me that 14 miles per hour is too slow on these electric bikes, I'm gonna show you what it looks like if you try to take a turn at higher speeds. Basically, one wheel ends up going up in the air and I'm trying to counteract that with my body and at 14 miles an hour or thereabouts, it is extremely difficult to do. Again, these are mobility devices meant for very slow speeds. All right, now let's do the rad trike and do the same thing. Here we are in the rad trike. Again, I don't know exactly what speed I'm going, but very similar as far as maneuverability. Again, I'm just using the throttle to work my way around these cones. Again, the rad trike has a slightly wider wheelbase, but if you go slow enough, no problem. And this is something that you simply couldn't do on a electric bike, only pos made possible by the uniqueness that makes an electric trike an electric trike. I could even do circles around this cone if I wanted to. The main goal of this video was of course showcasing both of these electric trikes, showing you how awesome they can be as mobility solutions for people who otherwise can't ride in a two wheel electric bike. But I really wanted to drive home for those considering any electric trike, just how these perform now on a flat sidewalk such as this. It can perform very well, feels very safe, but on uneven surfaces, as we've been talking about, it can be challenging. So here coming up on a driveway and it leans towards the left. So I kind of need to counteract that and then another sidewalk. So you do need to be able to shift your weight around just a little bit, depending on what kind of terrain you're encountering. Now, of course, any type of sloping surface is going to want to throw you off the bike. So I wanted to show you how this looks in practice. Going up some sidewalks here, slight turn. Here's a perfect example of where you might need to shift your weight to the left to kind of counteract the slope. And of course, you might encounter situations like this where you do have a driveway and you kind of need to lean to the left. You might encounter crosswalks like this one where they're simply not even. And you're gonna get jostled around a little bit. As we were going through the edit of this video, there's something that I wanted to make sure was abundantly clear because if you missed it in the walk around, we talked about how the pedal assist levels coincide with how much throttle you get from the electric XP trike. So it might seem like the XP trike has a lot of power no matter what, because we are riding it with pedal assist level five turned on with the throttle. So I just wanted to show off how it works in pedal assist level one. And then also, so you can see it in pedal assist level five. So here it is in pedal assist level one from a start on flat ground. And it eases you on very nicely, not going to take off on you. Now what's nice is if you are a more experienced rider, you can go into the higher pedal assist levels depending on your comfort level and get a little bit more power from the throttle from a stop. Here it is in pedal assist level five and you will notice that I'm going to take off much faster. And we'll run both of these clips next to each other so you can see the difference. All right, with that, back to the comparison. So we're at a unique spot here with a parking lot. There's some crushed gravel. We of course have the grass. Now these bikes aren't necessarily meant for off-road, but we're gonna talk a little bit about how they feel. All right, I'm going to give 
my bike full throttle. I'm I can gonna do start it too. Yeah, just go to ahead. show off the front wheel. All that right. is the difference between the two: is the front wheel motor versus the differential drivetrain in the rear of the. And I will say, you can feel the difference. You can feel the rad trike pulling you, whereas the XP trike pushes you. It's a little bit of a different experience. Yeah, which is something we we can only tell the main difference of uh, because we have each of them and we've been able to jump from one to the other. Um, it does not make one ride any better than the other. Like it, it's just a different characteristic of the two. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go, you got pedal slice five? I'm in five, yeah. Three, two, one, throttle only. There we now, go. Now on my bike, on the rad trike here, I did give it full throttle and I really like that rad really eases you on with the yeah. throttle, it's very accessible. But I will say once it got up to speed or once kind of I was on the throttle for a little bit, it did lose traction on that loose gravel. Again, this bike isn't necessarily meant to do so, but mm. people were wondering, can you take these bikes off road a little bit? We're on some grass yeah. and I feel pretty comfortable at slow speeds. How fast yeah. are we going? Uh, six to eight miles an hour. Now I so. will say the ride quality uh, yeah. leaves something to be desired. I would love to have some front, front suspension, maybe a suspension seat post as well. But this isn't necessarily the bike that I would take to go off road. And of course, any unevenness between both of the wheels is very noticeable. So my recommendation would be, and I would believe uh, JT would agree with me. Yes. If you're buying these bikes, don't use them off road. No, they're, unless you're just going, like you said, at a five to eight mile an hour speed off road, but this is not what they're intended for. They're intended to get you around on smooth paved sidewalks um, or flat crushed gravel paths. Whereas we're now uh, crossing a soccer field. We're so. gonna test out the clearance uh, over this curb. Don't recommend that you try this at home. No, we'll but see just... if either of these bikes scrape. And yeah, yeah, no problem. So even no with problem. that very minimal clearance, the bikes are totally fine if you perhaps needed to. Yeah. Even carry it off a curb or, or push it off a curb yeah. if you're loading it into the vehicle or something. Yeah, there's like plenty that. of clearance on the on the lower supports. We just wanted to really want to make sure that in an average environment, you're not going to run into a situation where you would have a problem. We wanted to talk a little bit about how the pedal assist engages both bikes using a cadence sensor. JT and I have both these bikes in pedal assist level one, yeah. and we're going to see how it goes. And again. The nice thing is with the throttles, you can always use the throttle to get started mm -hmm. because of course the gearing is meant for all the way up to 14 or so miles per hour. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. I'm going to try pedaling. All right, you ready? Here we go. Yeah, a little and bit of load to get off, but once it gets going, you feel the motor kick in. Here we go. And JT is going about four miles an hour, I can yep. see on his screen and basically the same from the rad trike. Maybe he's going to pull a little bit uh, away as he yeah. gets up to speed with the current base system. Yep, and then, yeah, they have it tapered to where it only gives you a certain amount of amps per gear or per pedal assist level, which is pretty nice. Let's see how these bikes do from a complete stop. We're both gonna use the throttle and see how things go. All right, All right. keep in mind, I am 145 or so pounds. <laughs> and I'm about 225, so a little bit of a difference. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, throttle only. And it looks like the XP trike takes off a little bit faster. Yep, and there, that's about the top speed there for both of us. And I did find that I had more traction on the pavement, not surprising, compared to the crushed gravel that I was testing out earlier. Here we are, we've switched bikes. We're gonna go ahead and go through this. Just remember the weight difference for one, and then the uh, throttle delay is gonna be a little bit greater because it needs a little bit more torque to ramp up. So again, it's a nice smooth takeoff. But when you're in a drag race, it's not exactly what you want. So. Yeah. All right, you ready? Again, oh. we're doing this for fun, and the Rad Trike certainly eases you on a little bit more. more. It yeah. barely gives you power when you first hit the throttle, whereas it feels a little bit more immediate on the XP Trike. All right, so throttle only, pedal system level five, three, two, one, go. There goes Ryan, takes right off, and then here goes the power comes rolling in on the XP, or on the Rad Trike here. And yeah, I mean, now you hit that 14 miles an hour and there's Ryan's up there giving us some slaloms on the uh, XP trike to kind of show you what it feels like as we dodge potholes as well. <laughs> so if you're looking to purchase a electric XP trike or a rad power bike, rad trike, 
We would really appreciate it. Again, if you use our links down in the description, it's a free way to help us continue to make videos like this one. We tried to make this video cover everything you could possibly think of with both of these electric bikes, but if you happen to have an additional question, let us know down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Ooh.